Hey everybody, it is coffee time. Last week we broke our record of like 357 views. So we really need to get this word around. When Brother Harwood comes on, we'll um, ask you to please go to YouTube and like it, subscribe to Graham's Coffee Time. Um, we want the more viewers we get, the more we can spread the word. We don't do this for any money. We just do it because we feel obligated to do something for the kingdom of God since he saved us. You know, it says go into the world and preach the gospel. And I can't preach, but I can certainly get preachers on here that can and that can bless each one of us because God knows I need it too. Um, we all do. If we stay in the word of God, that helps. But life w really gets in our way sometimes. And and here's Tracy. Let's get her on here. Get up. And a saint is just a sinner who falls down and gets up. Okay, here's Tracy. I'm going to go turn on my core audio, Tracy. Okay. I'm getting my Bible. Now, uh, uh, we see your dress. That's nice, Tracy. Go, oh, there you are. How are you? Okay. So I don't know what Brother H is going to preach on tonight, but and this must be him. Hold on. Okay. Yes, it is. Send him by, and we will be adding him. And let's see what. The Lord has laid on his heart that we can partake of the food of God. Yeah. Hey, brother. Hello, hello. Howdy, howdy. How are you? We're fine. Can you see me? Okay. Yeah, and we can hear you better. Good, 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 good. Well, how's your week been? Mine's been busy. The way Mine's the, busy. The, Weekend, anyway. <laughs> I tell you, what, mine has been, too. but it should be. I've been thankful for the strength that the Lord has given me. Amen. He, he has been so good to me, and uh, I'm gonna speak out of, if it's okay, the hundred and twenty-eight chapter of the book. Psalms. Before we do, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I, I saw somebody at a store earlier. Their heart is, they've been hurt by somebody. I call them religious minded people saying things that, you know, when a person sins, they know it. They're, they're not stupid, you know. Right. And they know it. And we're not God to judge them and condemn them. We can give them the scripture, tell them what the Lord says, and how He does love them in their situation they're in. But the Bible said, judge not. And, and uh, we can be fruit inspectors, but I, I'm not God and I have no right being condemning because I want to get it back at somebody. Did you, did you hear that part? Yeah. People want to be condemning because they want to get back at somebody. It's not so much what they're doing. I want to tell them what I think, and that, that's not right. No. Jesus, remember that well, when Jesus, that woman was brought before him, and they said, Jesus, the law says that she's to be stoned, but what do you say? He could have said a lot. He may have said a lot when he rode on the ground. Mm -hmm. All I know is when he got done writing, he looked up and stood up and said, Woman, where's your 
accuser. She said, the Lord, I have none. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And she saw the love of God. It's one thing to help somebody in their mishap or even in their sin. But we're not to cut the throat. No. That just like that because God knows what I'm talking about, who I'm talking about, where I talk to this person in the store. No doubt they're, what they're doing is probably wrong. I'd say it is wrong, even according to the scripture. But we can't win them to the Lord if we're going to cut their throats. God didn't call me to cut throats. He called me to pre preach the gospel. Yeah. And his Holy Ghost Spirit would convict and touch them and change their lives as they called upon the Lord. So, so right, it's our job to share to share the Lord, the love of the Lord, yeah. and yes, yes, the yes, Holy yes. Spirit go forth and do. If we don't, then we're not doing the ministry. That's right. It's hard hard sometimes not to, not to give our opinion. <laughs> We've all got them. You know, everybody's got an opinion. Right. And, but the love of God, it reaches far greater, far greater high than anything else. And I'm so glad he loved me so much. He forgave me. And all I had to do was ask him to. Yeah, if you ever have trouble forgiving somebody, just remember how much the Lord's forgiven you. Yes. We're going to go to the Lord. Do you have, anybody have any? I, I want you to say a special prayer for um, um, a friend. Her name is Glenda. She's, she has COPD pretty bad, and she just tested positive for COVID. Mm. So we need to please pray for her. She's having a hard time breathing right now. Oh my! I'm not in the hospital, so let's just pray it don't get any worse, and God touches her. Yes. And I've got a special request too for a lady that really needs a heal, and it's either God's going to heal her, or she's definitely going to meet the Lord. But as far as I know, she's a Christian, but she's—I can't mention her name, but she is in bad shape okay. with cancer. Hey, Samantha. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. God, you've been so good to us. And Lord, you had the angels of the Lord protecting us all day long. When the enemy would have tried to destroy us and devour us, you kept the enemy at bay. And you let the hand of the Lord stay upon us. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your word. Father, pray for these people or this individual that's got, Lord, possibly got COVID now, that's got COPD. Lord God, touch that individual with your healing. God, I pray, Lord, that you minister to every need. You know this individual I have to talk to. Let them, Lord. Let them hear your voice today in a loving way. Talk to them, Father. Let them know that you do love them in Jesus' name. Lord, bless this service today. And let the Holy Ghost have his way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We just have cancer at the roots. Yeah. It's lady that cherry was talking about in jesus name yeah because she's uh, on her deathbed she needs she needs yeah you know we're getting close to the return of the lord jesus christ yes and the closer we get the more we ought to be aware of our surroundings aware of our doing aware of our life I don't want anything to cause me to miss it. People said, do you think you can miss it? Well, I'll tell you what you need to do. 
look up the ten virgins. They were all waiting for the bridegroom to come. Yes. But five of them wasn't ready, and when he came, they looked at the other ones and said, "Hey, give us of your oil. Give us of what you've got, so we can go out and meet them too." And they said, "If we give to you, we don't have enough for ourselves." And the religious order today is looking like everything's okay, everything's all right. But when Jesus comes back, it's it's going to be in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, and it's going to be so quick we can be talking and all at once we're gone. Can you imagine that? We're right here in the middle of earth. And all at once, we're in the heavens with the Lord. He's come and got his church. And no more devil I have to put up with him. No more. That's wonderful. If I keep my flesh under control, I believe I'll be okay. <laughs> We've all got the attributes of the flesh, and mouth and anger. And, but here's the thing. Keep it under control. Control. So, Sister Cherry, was you gonna say something? Oh, I was gonna say, hey Tim, mm. see if you can move back just a little bit, because when you get up close, it distorts. I can't, I can't help you. What I'm going to do, I want to read in the 128th chapter of the Book of Psalms. So, if you want to look. Get in your Bible and let's read this. Okay. All right. That's good. Wherever you're at now is good. Thank you. Psalms 128. The psalmist said, Blessed is everyone that, that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. Blessed is every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, everyone that feareth the Lord and walketh in his ways. What does that mean? What's that mean to you guys? And don't say just exactly what it says. <laughs> well, it means what it says. <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. It, well, um, everybody that 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 walks in the word and respects has respect for their father is, is blessed. But we have to walk like he did. Mm -hmm. We have to. We I know we can't be perfect, but we have to strive for that. We have to honor and respect God. And how, what does the Bible say about? Go ahead. And what does the Bible say about uh, uh, narrow is the way? Yeah, yeah. Broad is broad the is way the, to destruction. And it, and the broad gate is where people's going to fall off into hell. Narrow is the way, the gate that leadeth into righteousness and heaven. We're going to make it by living the Word of God. We're not. I'm going to make it by our own opinions, by what mom and daddy said, or grandma and grandpa, or husband it's what, and wife. It's what the word says. And he said right here, number one, we've got to fear God with respect. You better fear the Lord. And what I mean by fear, a holy fear. If I don't obey his word, if I don't love him enough to do what he says, the enemy can come after me and literally destroy me in a heartbeat. That's right. because, because when you separate yourself from the Lord, you take yourself out from under okay. protection. Sure do. Sure do. It ain't nothing, it ain't nothing that that he does to you, although the word does say that he chastises the one his children, the ones that he loves. Yes. But it don't necessarily if you if you're walking in sin, it ain't because the the Lord is 
doing bad things to you. It's a choice you've made. I thought I'd come out here and enjoy the evening. And I've got some guineas right here at my porch singing a song to me. <laughs> to God's creation. I love it. Here's one thing, though, we need to look at. Also, he said, them that walketh in his ways. Yeah. In the are. All right. Right. So I wished sometimes that I could have it my way. Who doesn't? Let's get real here. There's sometimes I'd love to be able to tell somebody what I think. But that's not the ways of God. There's times I'd love to say, God, get them for what they said and what they did, but that's not God's ways. I don't have the right. I don't have the authority. I don't have the joint um, airship to take on God's role to do somebody wrong or do them harm. Right. All I have to do is if it says, thus saith the word of God, that I need to do it. I don't care if I don't feel like it's wrong. If the word says, don't do it, common sense tells you, don't do it. If your mom and dad told you, I want this, your room clean by the time I get back from the store. Now I'm giving you warning. I'm going to whip you if it's not clean. And so they're gone, and we're watching the TV and goofing off and playing. And we hear the car roll up in the driveway. We know judgment is at hand. Right. All at once, all the kids run in the bedroom and start giving orders you do this and I'll do that. <laughs> and they already hear us in the bedroom trying to get things together. It's too late then. <laughs> when the Lord comes back, we won't be able to get ourselves together. No. Nope. Right. And say, well, God, I know you said for me not to do this, but it's okay. I'm going to get right with you before you come back. The Bible said, no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. No, not even the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Yeah. Jesus. He's going to look at Jesus and say, go get my people. He'll do it that quick. And we're gone. So if you don't like the way I minister or talk or whatever, hang in there. We won't be on Glenn's uh, puppy time. That's right. else still in the time. You know something, Brother Harwood, you know that um, the way things are happening in Jerusalem and the way the United States, our president and all is turning uh, more toward the other side of Hamas. The Bible says in the last days, does it not say that all these nations will turn against Israel? Yes, it does. I mean, we're seeing that happen before our eyes. Yes, it does. It's time. The clock is really near midnight. The United States and the world to know I'm for the Jews. Amen. If, if America says they're against Israel, I'm no longer a citizen of America. I'll be for the Jews no matter what. Because he said those that bless them, I will bless. And they right. curse them, I'll curse them. That's right. The uh, blessings of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, President, I'm sorry. I'm for the Jews. And, Amen. And uh, I support them. I have, we have missionary at church missions, and we send things to Israel every month. So, hallelujah. But, you know, getting back to, to this, it's so close. It's not hard to go to heaven. You know, it's harder to go to hell than to go to heaven. Y'all ain't going to believe this. This weekend, I came in contact with the person 
and I don't even know how or what brought the subject up, but um, she told me that in her religious beliefs that she can choose whether to um, be a spiritual being when her body dies or she can choose to be to live on earth and help restore the earth back to the garden of even like eden like god wanted it well that i'm sorry that's nuts and i i didn't, I didn't know i was speechless me i was speechless i've um, never heard anything like that before and she I needed said, to show me i said have you I th and she reads the Bible. I said, have you not read in the Bible what heaven is going to be? And she said, well, yeah, I'm sure it's glorious, but I'm, I'm kind of used to this flesh and bone. I don't know how I would feel as a spiritual being. I don't really feel like I want to be a spiritual being. And I'm saying, and I didn't, I just, I just didn't say anything. There's a word that seemed to dwell under man, but the end thereof is judgment, it's death. So, Cindy Ma Kathy Michael said she had a similar situation. It's, Listen to me, folks. Is that Sean Gilchrist? Hey, Sean. I ain't seen him since high school. Uh, um, I'm gonna tell you so I was like, I mean, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> Here's the problem. People think that their their way's right. It's wrong. If it's not according to the word of God, you're wrong. You're well, going the to Holy Spirit wouldn't me. let me tell her she was wrong. I didn't say I just I just got I got checked. You need to give her the checked. word. Dude. You may never see this lady again. You needed to yeah, give her, her again. You want to tell her this. The Bible said there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is judgment. It's death. The Bible said that there's only one way to heaven through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that was provided for our atonement. We are only going to heaven because of Jesus. We are. This body is just a temporary thing. Right. The Bible said when the rapture takes place or the great catch it away. So don't have a uh, connection here. The Bible said when we go to be with Jesus, the, this is what the Bible said. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed from this mortal body and, be, and have an immortal body, a, a spirit body. Right. And we will instantly go be with Jesus in the air and go with him and we'll be with him forever and forever. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you want. That end has already been set in place. And, you know, the only, the only control you have is whether you choose to be in heaven with Jesus or whether you choose to go to hell. Either there's a way you don't get to choose to stay here on earth. But people well there's a way that seemeth right into a man. Here we go again. Yeah. She believes he's right. The only way she's yeah. going to be told that it's wrong is with the word. We yeah. we don't have to condemn her. <laughs> Write down some Bible scriptures the next time you see her say hey I feel led of the Lord to give this to you. I want you to read these scriptures and talk to God, and let the Holy. Yeah, I think I'll, I don't know. After it's over, I'll call you and I'll tell you what the religion is. I don't want to say it over the air, okay. but um, I mean, I didn't even know those people thought that way. I don't know. Well, it is, it is, it's something really that nice. she's got screwed up in her head. If maybe she. She hasn't read the Bible, and she just was, I don't know. I don't know, but it was so bizarre. I just went deaf and dumb. <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> all at once. 
it was like, oh no, I, this, is, this is something walk. that I don't need to just pop something off. I need to think about this. We must walk in his ways, right. all of his ways. It's not us. Yeah. I would love to sometimes think that my thinking and my ways would be enough, but it's not. Yeah. Because, because the Spirit of God leads. That's why Jesus said, I must go away. For if I go not away, the Spirit of truth is not going to come. But when I go away and he comes, he'll lead you and guide you into what? All truth. Yes, all truth. That's right. We, we don't have to wonder if the word a liar true. To God be the glory. God is the truth. And every man be a liar. God is true. Yeah. I, I've seen him so many times move in my life. I could never even have a doubt that he wasn't God. He wasn't right. He wasn't righteous. He wasn't holy. He was wrong. His word has proven itself time after time after time. How do you know? Look at the alcoholics that's been saved, the drug addicts that's been delivered, the church members that have had an experience with God. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, when the Spirit of God touches you and you respond to that spiritual touch, mm -hmm. and you accept God's plan of salvation, He saves you. That, and, you and you'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. And you won't want to look in other ways. Right. Once you, once you have a jesus experience you will never be the same mm -hmm. i mean i remember when i was a kid me and cherry's talked about it a million times how we used to go to the altar every sunday but once that understanding got into my spirit and once i realized and i and i understood and then and once i was filled with the holy spirit i've never been the same never been what? the same but what changed our life, Tracy? It was getting into the right. Word of God. Once we found out, and we were very young at that point in our lives, but as we grew older and we got into the Word of God, that did change us. Our spirit was willing, right. but our flesh was weak until we partook, partook of His food, yeah. which is the Word. And, and, and it is a process. I mean, you do have to learn and grow in the Lord. Just like your flesh has to have nutrition to to grow when you're a child, it's the same. It's the same process. But I pray. Once I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I prayed for a hunger for God's Word, and I prayed for it when before I would read, I would pray for understanding. And if you, you know, you've heard the saying where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. If you you truly want to understand the word of God and you truly want to walk in his ways, then God will give you an understanding of his word. And it don't matter if it's King James version or whatever, whatever you have available to you, God will help you to understand that. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you mean business with God, he means business with That's you. That's right. That's right. And uh, but he said, study to show yourself to show thyself approved unto God. Unto God. I care what the world thinks about me. I want God to be approved of my life through studying His Word. Why? Because the enemy will come in as a wolf. Mm -hmm. and sheep's and he's not, but he's got a. a, a outfit of a sheet's clothing on but he's a wolf and he'll like like everything's fine he's your friend he's your buddy and then when you least expect it he'll destroy you that's right yeah. jesus told me that i'm to stay close to him i when i go to the lord i ask god david Lord, don't let me get tripped up by anything that the enemy may try to throw in my way. Keep me holy before you. God, let me keep myself under subjection to your word. 
and to your spirit so yeah. that I will not stumble and fall to the ways that the world and the devil have laid out for me, the traps. And as a pastor and a preacher, you have a great responsibility because when you get to heaven and you stand before the Lord, you're going to stand accountable for what you've told people, yep. what you've ministered to people. What I mean, yep. can't be stumbling blocks. Yeah, I know. And everybody that, and here's the sad thing. So every born again person that's accepted Jesus, they've got a responsibility to go tell the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. And we can do it. It's it's not hard to show them the the love of God. And it's not for teachers and preachers and bishops and whatever all those words are that they call leaders in church. It's not just them. It's every Christian has the that commission. If you're a Christian, the Great Commission is your ministry. Yes. I had an old preacher make a statement one time, and it's so true. He said, shepherds can't begat sheep. Sheep can't begat sheep. Yes. Shepherds just feed and take care of them. That's all right. So you sheep out there, go win somebody. We need to get out there and begat more sheep. (laughs) Yes, sir. Change them goats into sheep. They'll say, nah, I don't want to. (laughs) (laughs) Just a little laughter. We're going to pray. I've got people in my family that really need a touch from God. I do too. And I've got faith that God, even though I can't do nothing for him or reach him, that blood of Jesus can go all all the way where they are and touch them. The Spirit of God can convict them. And it's going to take them. But God's God and he's got this. He's got my family. He's got the kids. He's got the loved ones. And I refuse to let the devil have them. Because the word says, if you're thankful, you'll see a household say. I want to share this. Um, I want to share my notes that I took. I don't know when it was. It was at church, though. It's, um, I don't remember if it was in Sunday school or if it was in the main um, preaching or whatever. But anyway, it was about the woman with the issue of blood. Uh the keys to her it might have been last Wednesday night the keys to her redemption and her wholeness you know the story the woman with the issue of blood she suffered for how many years oh for years I don't remember the only grew worse yes and she was in a crowd where Jesus was. She pressed through the crowd and she touched the hem of his garment. And he said, he turned to her, he turned around and wanted to know who touched him. And she was made whole. But there was Damn, a court, 12 years. Yeah, 12 years. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. I always second guess. He said, who touched me? And the disciples said, you ask us who touched you and the crowd's thronging you? Right. He said, yes, but somebody touched me for I felt yeah. virtue, virtue leave my body. Right. And turned, she knew she wasn't, she couldn't stay hid any longer, and she stood up, she said, Master, it was me. So what he she said, did, he, she heard the word. Yes. So she had hope, faith, and action, and she accepted it. She heard the word, she believed the word, she spoke it out loud, and then she acted on it, pressing into the crowd, and then she she accepted it. She knew, she knew that she, she knew that she knew she touched his him, that she would be made whole. And that is the kind of faith, and I don't know, I just was looking at this. Let me read this too, it says, it's up to me to know who I am in Jesus, to know God, is love and how to release these things in my life that Jesus has already gone to the cross for victory over all of it. 
my free will has to come into agreement with the word of God and I have to continuously command my flesh to die out to give the spirit of God a chance to lead and guide me walking in the spirit. And what it comes down to is when we touch the Savior, do we believe? Yes. I'm going to heaven not because of the Lord's blood being applied to my heart. I accept it. Yes, I believe Whosoever it. Shall believe, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. We've got to not only ask him, we got to live for him. We got to love him. We've got to live a right a righteous life before the Father. I don't have a problem living for Jesus. I'm sorry. I get up in the morning and I ask him to touch me and to keep me. I've been too far to turn back now. I don't have no turning around. I'm looking forward to the soon return of the Lord, whether it be take me by the grave. I'm looking for the soon return of Jesus. Yeah. I want to pray. If you don't know the Lord, you ask God to come into your heart. If you want the Lord to save you, ask him to do it. I feel the spirit of God right now as, I'm, as I talk, and he wants to do some work in some lives this evening. Yes. If you want the Lord you're tired of the life you're living. You didn't just listen to this accidentally. God saw down through the time should turn this on so you could hear about the love of God for you. He loves you. He's not condemning you. He's forgiven you if you ask him to. Yes. And the conviction of the Lord is moving in these in this service today. All you got to do is ask God to come into your life, forgive you of your sin, and believe that the Lord Jesus died on a cross for you. And God will save you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the Holy Ghost anointing that's in this place right now. I feel your presence. I know you're there. Lord, there's a lot of people out there that need you. They need the touch of the, the master. They need the touch of the Holy Ghost to touch their lives and change them. As they call upon you and ask you to forgive them of the sin, to come into their life and they believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They believe he died for them. Father, they ask you to come into their life Lord, like your word said you would, cleanse them from all unrighteousness, save them from their sin, and Lord, put them on the new road of righteousness, and let them learn of you by studying your word. Thank you, Lord. We accept your plan of salvation today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray, you're out there. And you ask God to forgive you of your sin and come and give us, drop us a call, give us a call. Let us know that this ministry has touched your heart through the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And God bless you for listening. God bless every one of you for listening today. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody for all the views that we've had and don't forget if if you want to tell someone someone about us and you can't find it on facebook we we do have a youtube page with all of our videos on there it's called graham's coffee time it usually takes me a little bit to get it posted maybe an hour or so but you can go if you can find it on facebook you can go back and rewatch it if you can't you can go to youtube and find it on Graham's Coffee Time. And if you go there, please be sure to like it and subscribe it. So we're trying, we're striving to get to where we can go live on um, on YouTube. Yes. 
God bless you, ladies. Till next week, folks. God bless y'all. God bless you. Bye. Bye, y'all.